So today we have uh, the uh, second part of the physical design of IoT. Uh, so uh, in the last class, we learned about the physical design of IoT. Uh, and uh, in there, we talked about uh, the physical uh, components uh, of IoT and uh, the protocols of IoT. So uh, the things and uh, the protocols uh, make this physical design of IoT. So currently uh, we are in the second uh, topic of the first uh, unit, uh, which is the physical design of IoT, right? So in the last class, uh, we learned about, uh, as I said, the things, and in things we learned about uh, the different sensors we can use, uh, the processing boards uh, and the certain microcontrollers that uh, are there in the uh, boards and uh, the communication protocols and the communication modules that are there in those uh, hardware devices. So uh, so the all these uh, hardware devices, the sensors, processors, the communication modules, we call as things. And uh, uh, then we have uh, the protocols, right? So the protocols are standards and rules that uh, uh, that uh, explain how the communication should happen from a device to another device, or like how the uh, data should be transferred uh, in the physical medium, right? Uh, so. Uh, those are the two components of the physical design of IoT, right? So we are in the second uh, section, with the, which is the IoT protocols. So in the IoT protocols, uh, we have uh, so many protocols. So because of that, we have to divide them into different layers, right? So we talked about uh, physical and data link layer protocols in the last class. So um, I talked about the Bluetooth, Zigbee, uh, LoRa, Wi-Fi technologies and uh, the protocols. Uh, so uh, then uh, we talked a little bit about the network layer protocols, which comprise of IPv4, IPv6 uh, addressing. Uh, and then we talked about six low pan uh, protocol, right? Uh, also, we talked about the transport layer protocols, the transmission control protocol, the TCP, and the UDP, user datagram uh, protocol. Right. Uh, so today we'll be focusing mostly on the application layer protocols. Uh, so uh, application layer protocols are also uh, there are many protocols. Uh, so. Uh, we will be looking at the uh, most popular uh, protocols for IoT applications, right? So when we take uh, the popular protocols, we have uh, protocols such as MQTT, COAP, HTTP, WebSocket, and so on. So in the last time, uh, we talked about the uh, IP uh, addressing uh, IP addressing protocols, so IPv4, IPv6 protocols. So these protocols are used to give a unique identity for each device that is connected to the network. And uh, then we have in uh, the IP uh, in the IP header. Uh, that means uh, in the data packet uh, that we send using the IP protocol, we have a header, which we call as the IP header. Uh, and it consists of uh, the uh, details, such as the packet length, time to leave, source address, destination address, and so on. There are so, some more details also there in the IP header of a, a IP uh, data gram. We call the IP data packet as an IP data gram. And in the datagram, we have uh, in the header, uh, we have uh, details uh, which are uh, uh, 
giving us information about uh, source address, destination address, time to leave, packet length, and so on. There are some more details there in the header. So uh, anyway, all those de details are uh, required by the IP protocol to uh, route the uh, data gram from the source node to the destination node. So, uh, uh, so in, in uh, the parameter time to live, uh, what we mean is the maximum number of hops that the uh, datagram will uh, travel until it will get discarded by the network. So, uh, uh, if you, if uh, if the datagram is taking too long to reach the destination, it will get discarded by the network. Otherwise, there will be a lot of uh, uh, data packets uh, remaining in the network. So in order to reduce the congestion of the network, we can use the time to live uh, and we can minimize the uh, congestion of uh, packets which are uh, not reaching the destination on time. And then uh, uh, at the each hop, the IP, IP protocol will uh, check uh, the routing table and uh, it will decide the next best node to uh, forward the datagram. So the, uh, the transmission of packets will happen according to the routing table. So it will choose the best next node then uh, the packet will be transferred to the uh, best next node. So uh, in the uh, network layer, we uh, another protocol we talked about was uh, the six low pan uh, protocol. So uh, the six low pan protocol is uh, uh, the IPv6 over low power wireless personal area network protocol. And it is a very special uh, protocol for the IoT applications, right? Uh, for IoT applications, which require uh, which are in uh, low uh, power, low bandwidth scenarios, uh, right? So, for example, uh, in wireless sensor networks, uh, for example, in uh, resource constraint environments, uh, we need uh, we need low power transmissions, low bandwidth. We have low bandwidth uh, ability uh, for communication. So, because of that. Uh, in these cases, we need light uh, protocols and lightweight packet transmission. So, in, because of that, we need to compress. Uh, we need to have a different protocol, and uh, this six low pan is a is a good solution for such problems. So, six low pan is giving uh, is making IP header compression such that the packet size is made smaller. In standard IPv6 uh, uh, protocol, the packet size is uh, about 1024 bytes. Uh, but in 6 low pan, it is only 127 bytes. Right? Apart from that, uh, as I said before, this is for uh, constraint environments. Right? And uh, the uh, nodes in the uh, constraint environment can form a cluster and it can communicate with each other. And uh, the uh, devices use the IP address, IPv4, IPv6 uh, protocol to communicate with each other in, in the constraint environment. And then uh, once uh, the messages uh, can reach the edge router, the edge router, which is at the edge of the uh, constraint environment. Uh, can uh, uh, can obtain the messages and pass it forward it uh, to the cloud or the internet using IPv4 or IPv6. That means using the normal uh, communication protocols, it can forward the information uh, from uh, the from its edge router to the internet. Right. So uh, it, it, inside the constraint environment. Uh, the communication uh, will happen uh, using IPv6. That is why it is known as six low pan or IPv6 over low pan uh, protocol. 
So, uh, so in, inside the constraint environment, uh, it, the communication will happen using IPv6 uh, protocol. And uh, the constraint environment here means uh, any kind of environment which have lesser uh, facilities in terms of energy, in terms of bandwidth, in terms of uh, some other uh, parameter. If there's some kind of a deficiency, we call that a constraint environment, right? Uh, also, these uh, sensor nodes or the nodes inside the constraint environment can communicate with each other using communication technologies like Zigbee Wi-Fi, right? So uh, another important thing is this does not need a specified IoT gateway uh, for this uh, uh, protocol or this network to work. So uh, therefore, uh, the edge router in here can work as a gateway, right? So the gateway uh, is, uh, is a component in the network which can uh, connect uh, one network with another different network. Right. Gateway is uh, also known as a protocol converter. That means it is able to identify uh, the different uh, networks and uh, connect the messages to the correct network and uh, uh, form the communication link such that the data packet will uh, go in the correct uh, manner or, or go in the correct link to the destination, right? So um, uh, the uh, router also we can uh, consider as a gateway. Uh, and uh, if, I mean, the router, uh, if uh, it has the ability to uh, have uh, ability to uh, understand like to which, uh, to which router the next communication must be forwarded or to which component the communication uh, must be forwarded, then uh, that router can form, uh, behave as a gateway, right? Uh, so uh, any component which can um, uh, connect a different network with another uh, type of a network, we call as a gateway, right? So in here in the six low pan the edge router uh, which is at the edge of a uh, communication range or at the uh, which is connected directly to the internet can uh, behave as the gateway so this six low pan technology can be used for smart meters smart homes etc So uh, we talked so far about uh, the uh, IP protocols in the network layer, the transport protocols in the transport layer. And next we have to talk about the application layer protocols. So we have already talked about the IP protocols and we talked about the transmission control protocols also in the last class. In the last class, I mentioned about the transmission control protocol, the TCP and uh, the UDP, the user datagram protocol, right? So transmission control protocol is a, a connection oriented protocol, right? It establishes the path from the source node to the destination node before uh, sending the data. Therefore, it is a very reliable way of communicating data and the, uh, the possibility or the, uh, ability for, for a packet to get lost is very low in TCP. So almost all the time, TCP will recover all the lost packets and it will make sure that all the uh, packets are reaching the destination reliably because it is a connection oriented protocol. So it makes a, a, like a reliable path for the communication to happen and then it transmits the data. So the user datagram protocol uh, is a different one. It is a connectionless protocol. That means that it does not create a uh, reliable link from the uh, destination from the source to the destination, but uh, it uh, keeps on sending the 
data like frequently to its neighbors right so it is sending the same data even uh, multiple times to its neighbors using that technology it is making uh, so uh, the reliability of the communication uh, higher so it is sending multiple data of the same kind to its neighbors so the neighbors once it receives the data packets the neighbors choose the next best node using the routing table and uh, uh, send the data towards those uh, best nodes likewise uh, the da datagram protocol is uh, uh, like a random uh, protocol which is connectionless protocol which uh, which forwards data uh, in a very uh, random or unreliable uh, way towards the destination however it is also very useful protocol which is used in multiple applications the user datagram protocol is used for uh, mostly for uh, online data streaming and so on so once you are watching a youtube video uh, or some kind of online stream right so you are uh, you don't care about losing uh, the packets in between because the udp protocol is sending multiple copies of the same data packets multiple times so because of that uh, although there's no established route between the source and the destination the uh, the uh, the since the protocol is enabling multiple copies of the same data uh, and it is sending in all directions and then it is sending uh, the forwarding the data so uh, therefore it is making the possibility or the uh, the uh, communication reliable somehow uh, such that the uh, packets are anyway received by the uh, destination right uh, so user datagram protocol is used for applications where we need low latency right we uh, we need low latency we need uh, like quick um, updates so we we use user datagram protocols however when we need reliable communications when we need highly accurate uh, data communication we use tcp uh, protocol so now we are fo focusing on the application layer protocols right so application layer protocols as i mentioned a little while ago uh, we have different popular uh, application layer protocols right uh, so for iot applications we have uh, mqtt protocol which is a very popular uh, protocol right and it is uh, known as the message queuing telemetry transport protocol it was uh, developed by uh, Andy Stanford Clark in IBM and Arlen uh, Nipper of Eurotech in 1999. So uh, MQTT is a very popular protocol uh, because it is a lightweight protocol. And uh, uh, it is a reliable protocol. It is uh, sending data and uh, the data is very uh, reliable in the system because it is using uh, like a server called MQTT broker. The MQTT broker is a, a device, we can call it the server, that keeps a list of the subscribers in the network. Right. Uh, so I will explain about the subscribers. So uh, MQTT protocol is uh, a protocol which has a, a MQTT broker. Okay. So MQTT broker is uh, able to uh, do some uh, storage of the list of uh, devices uh, that are connected to the uh, broker. Right. And uh, the MQTT protocol is based on the publish and subscribe model, right? Uh, so it uh, uses uh, publish and subscribe model and uh, use it to uh, transmit the messages. So uh, MQTT protocol is uh, similar to uh, like TV radio broadcast where the TV or the radio station is broadcasting some information, 
and uh, some i mean let's say uh, some there are channels different channels right uh, so different channels are broadcasting their channel content uh, however only the subscribers to those channel will receive that message right so if you are tuning into a certain channel in the tv uh, the only the channel that you tune in will be shown to you right so uh, the uh, the uh, radio station there are multiple radio stations but uh, only the one that we subscribe to we, will be shown to us and we only need that content likewise there are uh, people who are publishing content like the tv or the radio uh, stations and there are people who have subscribed to that content right so in this mqtt protocol there are two types of devices i mean uh, i mean two types of functions that the devices can perform uh, the first one is the publish and the second one is the subscribe so the devices can publish uh, certain content or the devices can subscribe to a certain content right so uh, the difference between the normal tv radio broadcast and the, the mqtt protocol uh, based iot networks is that uh, in iot networks both the um, the the broadcasting person and the uh, receiving person can uh, publish and subscribe they can and uh, the devices can both uh, can do both the functions publishing and subscribing right so in tv radio broadcast you know that we can tune into the channel but we can't broadcast something to the radio station right we can't broadcast some content to the radio uh, channel i mean the tv right so the tv won't uh, won't be receiving any content from us right so in, in what i mean is in the tv uh, tv uh, tuning scenario right so in that scenario uh, only uh, there's only one publisher and one subscriber right but in iot uh, networks in the mqtt protocol each device can behave uh, as a publisher or a subscriber right so uh, those are the main functions in the mqtt protocol publishing and subscribing right so the mqtt broker we call the mqtt broker is a, a component in the iot network which keeps a list of subscribers so when the uh, when a certain subscriber is uh, is a uh, subscribing to a topic the broker key, uh, adds the client to the list of subscribers for that topic uh, the mqtt broker has uh, like the topics and uh, its subscribers it keeps the, it as a list right so if you have any questions regarding what i'm explaining please uh, put in the chat box right uh, so uh, i will answer after i uh, check uh, I, i will check the chat box and i will answer those questions uh, apart from that uh, i think i uh, for this week i think uh, the interactive session class was uh, not held because i was not aware of the timetable however once i get the information of the uh, timetable i will uh, i will let you know and uh, right so let's uh, go to the content again so in the mqtt uh, protocol so uh, the uh, sensors which collect information about different uh, parameters such as the temperature the humidity or like the pressure right uh, or any other thing will publish those data to the mqtt broker right it will publish those data and uh, uh, communicate that to the uh, mqtt broker so once the mqtt broker will receive that uh, message it will uh, check 
the list of subscribers. So it knows, okay, this subscriber has uh, subscribed to the uh, location information. So if it is, if it, uh, if that device has subscribed to the location information, then, uh, or the temperature information in a certain location, then uh, that uh, subscriber will get the temperature information of a certain location, right? And uh, if uh, the subscriber has uh, subscribed to the uh, like uh, earthquake monitoring or it wants to know the vibration of, uh, of a certain location, then the MQTT broker sends that, inf that relevant information to that uh, subscriber. And if uh, the, uh, uh, another user wants another uh, information regarding data, then uh, that data will be transferred to the uh, that subscriber and uh, that subscriber will store that information right so uh, i hope you understood about the mqtt broker and its function right so mqtt is a broker is a is used to uh, keep a reliable record of the uh, publishers and subscribers in the network so that uh, the data will be reliably transmitted to the uh, required devices under the uh, specified topic. And uh, in uh, generally in uh, MQTT uh, uh, brokers, there are two types of brokers. So first one is a managed brokers. That means uh, a broker which is managed by a certain uh, another third party. Uh, so uh, we can take as an example AWS, Azure, Mosquito, and Hive M MQ. So these uh, these brokers manage the uh, function of the MQTT uh, broker uh, in their uh, infrastructure right so what we need to do is we just need to use the infrastructure for our iot project and then get the output in that infrastructure right so we might have to uh, we might have to like pay for the services we get but uh, they will uh, manage all the aspects of the mqtt broker uh, broker's performance Right, uh, so it will make sure that the data is correctly, uh, I mean, stored and uh, secured and uh, communicated to the uh, subscribers and so on. So the role of MQTT broker will be uh, take uh, covered or managed by the uh, the uh, third party organization, and uh, they will take care of it to. Uh, you i mean they will do it for you you don't have to build the uh, broker in your own uh, device but they will give you the all the resources and they will uh, allocate a place in their computers their servers for this broker function so you can use the uh, the service given by them and you can use their resources to implement your broker uh, in the uh, in their servers and then you can take the output and you can uh, use it in your systems uh, so that one is a managed broker right there are popular managed brokers aws azure those are very popular organizations right so, but uh, this uh, mosquito and high mq those are both managed and self hosted brokers that means the uh, they can either we can ask them to uh, do the uh, hosting of the uh, MQTT broker or else we can host the MQTT broker in our own uh, devices or servers. However, I mean, all those, both those options are uh, available to us, right? Uh, however, in self-hosted brokers, we need to... Um, I mean, initialize the Mosquito, uh, I mean, this MQTT broker function, we need to initialize it in our own local server. 
in this case, we can take the resources that are available given to us by this uh, by these companies, right? So these companies are uh, the are open source. Um, uh, can I mean providers? So they provide us the uh, libraries and the protocols and the tools and uh, all the softwares and uh, I mean resources uh, for for us and we can uh, deploy it in our local servers so we can self-host uh, and we can use uh, self-host by using the resources that they have given to us so we call that the self-hosting uh, brokers self-hosted brokers right so we can take another scenario where we uh, we have the MQTT protocol functioning, right? So uh, let's take a scenario where we have a sensor that takes in temperature as a measurement and it publishes the sensor measurement uh, to, uh, to the uh, MQTT broker, right? So the MQTT broker will uh, uh, check uh, the uh, which devices have subscribed to the topic temperature right so under temperature uh, the devices that have subscribed to it will uh, will receive pub, uh, some uh, information from the mqtt broker the broker will publish the temperature information uh, on the uh, subscribed devices so the subscribed devices will uh, receive the temperature information, right? So once you want to implement uh, the uh, MQTT protocol in your own uh, like microcontroller, we need to um, code it in the, uh, in the microcontroller. We can use either C++ or micro Python languages if we are going to implement in uh, a processor like ESP32, right? So uh, ESP32 is one of the trending uh, hardware boards for IoT. So uh, the reason is that it enables us to connect to the internet. The, it has a Wi-Fi module and it has other functions as well. So uh, because it has the ability to connect to Wi-Fi, it is a very popular microcontroller hardware board. So because of that, uh, ESP, I chose ESP32 uh, to uh, consider this uh, coding of MQTT protocol uh, as an example. So we can uh, use either C++ or MicroPython languages. So in uh, when we are using C++, we need uh, libraries uh, that are um, uh, unique to the MQTT protocol. So we need to use uh, the pubsub client.h library uh, and uh, uh, we need to use it to implement the MQTT protocol, right? So uh, if uh, we are using C++, we need to use that library, right? So this is uh, like a sample code that we can use to implement the MQTT protocol using C++, right? Uh, so uh, different functions need to be done. I mean, different uh, actions or uh, like procedure steps need to be followed uh, when we want to uh, implement the MQTT protocol. So, uh, so when we are doing C++, we need to uh, uh, encode like this. And uh, when we use MicroPython, we need to use a library called uh, this um, MQTT simple import MQTT client uh, library, right? Uh, so uh, we need to use that library to, um, uh, uh, to develop the MQTT protocol. Uh, this library has built-in functions that are unique to the MQTT protocol. So because of that, it is very easy to import this library and use the functions uh, related to that. So uh, the MicroPython and Python, the difference is that uh, 
the python is uh, running on powerful processors and uh, in desktops and laptops however micro python is designed to run on hardware boards uh, like smaller low power microcontrollers such as esp32 raspberry pi and other arduino boards and so on so because of this we need to uh, use micro python uh, in order to implement uh, the mqtt in iot uh, networks right so in iot applications and in applications where we want to build the mqtt in hardware boards we need to apply micro python language right so let's take a zero code uh, for mqtt protocol right so mqtt protocol is using basically two functions right publish and subscribe so each device can uh, publish and subscribe to a certain topic right so either it can uh, yeah so either it can uh, publish uh, and uh, it can uh, just uh, subscribe to a notification right so this example i have taken from uh, a website i will uh, show you that website so this example is in this website which you can uh, actually go once you uh, go from this presentation i have linked it so in this uh, example they have implemented the mqtt protocol regarding publishing uh, some information to the topic hello and um, the other device who have who has uh, subscribed to the topic hello will receive the message published by the uh, esp1 right esp1 device publishes uh, certain information data uh, under topic hello and then the esp2 will subscribe to the topic uh, if it is if it has subscribed to the topic hello it will receive the data that it, uh, that was published under the topic hello and then uh, once uh, like esp32 has received sorry esp2 device has received that data it will give a notification uh, back to the esp1 uh, by publishing uh, onto the topic notification some message right some message saying that it received the data right uh, so the esp1 device has subscribed to the notification so because of that the esp1 will uh, receive the data re sent by the esp2 uh, saying that it has received the message so this is a su simple scenario that they have considered in this website right so the sample code for that implementation e in esp32 is also available in this website right uh, so this uh, my this is using micro python and they have implemented that using uh, that uh, micro python in the esp32 uh, microcontroller so the problem i have is that uh, i want to uh, adapt this code into uh, my application where i want other topics to be considered right so i want to consider a scenario where i publish some uh, data uh, uh, regarding temperature for example right i want to right like in i want to i want to sub, uh, publish some data under the topic temperature right so not uh, uh, not uh, i mean not the hello topic hello but i want to sub publish some data under the topic temperature I want to give some temperature information. I want to publish some temperature information onto the MQTT broker, right? The, all the people, all the devices who have subscribed to the temperature topic will then receive the temperature information, right? So the ESP2 device, uh, I want it to receive temperature details by subscribing to the temperature detail, temperature topic, right? So 
uh, then once it has received the temperature details, I want it to give a notification back to the ESP one, right? Or oh, that uh, it has received the temperature information. And for that, the ESP one needs to subscribe to the notification topic, right? So all the notifications related to the temperature data uh, will be stored under the topic notification. So the uh, once somebody publish in there, that information will be uh, transferred, transmitted to ESP one device uh, since it is subscribing to the notification topic, right? So let's consider only these two devices are there in the IoT network, right? So in that case, right? So how are we going to change the code? that is there in the website right so let's see how we can we can uh, like adjust the code that is there for uh, for mqtt protocol implementation for another application and how we can adjust it for our own requirements right so when we are going to implement the mqtt protocol we need to first import the required libraries right so we have uh, different libraries, as I said before, uh, we need different, I mean, uh, we need specifically libraries related to MQTT protocol, right? MQTT uh, based, uh, based library is a must. Apart from that, we have other libraries that help us to use the microcontroller, uh, the ESP32, right? The ESP32 based libraries are there, we need to import them as well. Right, so likewise, there are other, I mean, required libraries that we need. We need to all, we need to import them all into our code, right? And then we also need to initialize our uh, system, right? We need to give um, what are the uh, communication mediums that we have, right? So uh, since we are, I mean, we are going to use Wi-Fi, Right, ESP32 has an inbuilt Wi-Fi module, so we can use Wi-Fi directly uh, if we are using ESP32. So in this case, we need to uh, initialize our code by giving details about the Wi-Fi that we are using, right? So the SSID uh, refers to the Wi-Fi name, right? So we need to give the Wi-Fi name uh, as the SSID a password of the Wi-Fi, and then we have to give the MQTT server address, right? MQTT IP address, right? So this IP address, we we need to get uh, depending on the server that, that we are using, right? As I said before, we can allocate a server in our own, uh, even in our own uh, I, I, IoT, I mean, in our own resources, or else we can, uh, take the uh, resources in other companies like AWS, Azure, and so on. Right? We can get the server address or the server location in their infrastructure, or we can build the MQTT server in our own um, local servers. Right? So uh, whatever the method, we can define the server that we are going to use for MQTT protocol. And then we can uh, define uh, or we can obtain the IP address of the MQTT server, right? So we put that IP address uh, as the MQTT server address, right? So we can take as for example, this is the, uh, this is the IP address of that MQTT server, right? So, uh, then we have to take the client ID. So client means the ESP32 device, right? So this is the um, device which is uh, doing the communication, right? So uh, the ID which is unique for the machine, we need to obtain. We can obtain using this code, right? So it is something that is uh, inherent for the ESP32 and uh, using the libraries we have, we can find the unique ID of the uh, client, right? So machine unique ID will give the unique ID of the client. And then uh, we need to specify to what topic we are going to uh, publish our information, right? So uh, the topic 
of publishing we define as temperature right so in here the esp30 esp1 the esp1 device will publish temperature information under temperature topic right so the topic of publishing we call as b uh, quotation inside quotes temperature so b means we are going to give this uh, string as a byte in bytes we are going to give right uh, so in microcontrollers we need to convert it into bytes and give it to the microcontroller uh, because it is easy for the processing then uh, topic sub right topic sub means uh, subscribe topic right subscribe topic is notification right so we have subscribed to the notification that is coming from the esp2 device right so esp2 device will give some information to the notification and uh, and and notification once uh, the mqtt broker receives that notification uh, i mean uh, some messages to the notification topic it will uh, transfer that information to the esp1 right so if some message has been received uh, uh, under the topic notification it will be transferred to the esp1 by the mqtt broker right i hope that is clear to you then we can uh, do some initiation at the uh, at this device so we are considering esp1 here right so i will go back to the the diagram so this esp1 is the device which is taking uh, some temperature measurements in fixed time intervals uh, publishing that in the MQTT broker, right? So because of that, ESP1 device need to keep a count of the temperature measurements that it takes and it needs to take into account a fixed time interval at which it is taking the temperature measurements, right? So the sensor that it is me taking measurements will take measurements at fixed time intervals, right? So that time interval is uh, defined as the uh the message interval in here so we have defined it as the five five so in here we are defining a fixed time uh, five seconds right so after five at each five seconds some temperature data will be uploaded to the mqtt broker right and then uh, last message means at what time the last message was sent Right. So initially, uh, it would be equal to zero, right? At zero time instance, the last message was sent because no message was sent initially. So last message equal to zero. Then counter we take as uh, the variable which counts the number of messages that have been um, uploaded to the MQTT broker uh, as temperature, right? How many times of uh, data has been uh, uploaded to the uh, broker how many times that we have uploaded temperature data right uh, so those variables we can uh, initially decide then uh, our uh, we need to connect our esp32 into uh, the network right in order to connect to the wi-fi we need to first set up the network interface and that is done using this code right so the network interface of this uh, ESP device will be activated by using this uh, code, right? So once it is active, it will connect to the Wi-Fi uh, access point, right? So there, there is a router that, uh, that to which this ESP uh, device will, uh, controller will connect to, right? So once the network interface is prepared, uh, then we give the uh, command to, for the network interface to connect to the Wi-Fi. And then we have uh, we have this function where it says that uh, if the uh, if the uh, ESP device or the station is not connected, I mean if the station connected is false, that means if it is not connected, this while loop will run until it is uh, connected, right? So. If it is not connected, this will keep on looping, right? Because uh, until it is connected to the Wi-Fi, this uh, rest of the code will not run. 
until uh, the uh, possibility or the Wi-Fi is get, getting connected to the device, this loop will run, right? And then once it is connected, this uh, we will come out of the loop and uh, connection successful messages will be printed, right? And then we have something uh, called the callback function, right? So the callback function is used uh, in this code to respond to a certain event, right? That means like uh, if uh, the, uh, if, a, uh, uh, if a certain message is received, right, under a certain topic at the device, at the ESP32, uh, at the ESP device one, if a certain message is received under a certain topic, this callback function will store that information. Right, it will store at what topic, what uh, under what topic this message was received. It will store that information uh, using this function, right? And then, uh, uh, then uh, we also have another uh, function that is defined as connect and subscribe. Right, connect and subscribe is used to uh, connect uh, the uh, ESP. Uh, ESP uh, device uh, to uh, uh, the uh, server MQTT server and uh, also define uh, to which topics that this device has subscribed to right so all these are done using this uh, code right so once we run this code we can uh, subscribe to a certain topic so the only place where we need to change the uh, topic is in here, right? The topic sub we need to uh, include, uh, which which is depending on the topic to which we have subscribed. And then we have to also, I mean, since, I mean, I think initially we subscribed to these, uh, I mean, we have defined these variables, right? Topic sub also we have defined. So therefore, actually, uh, all the input data for this code has already been given by us. So because of that, we can just uh, do the coding of this function. And uh, at the end of this code, this um, the details regarding, I mean, the functions uh, for the client will be uh, decided, right? The client will subscribe or uh, subscribe to a certain topic. The client will, I mean, connect to the MQTT server right the client will uh, also have the functions of this uh, callback function right the callback function is known as sub uh, underscore cb so uh, all those functions will be enabled at the client by this function right so the client will uh, follow the callback function once uh, it receives some information regarding a certain topic uh, suddenly right so uh, i mean once uh, as soon as uh, the mqtt broker receives some information regarding a topic it will sub uh, it will uh, send the details to the uh, esp device right the device will suddenly uh, receive that message right so because at that moment the callback function will get activated and it will store the data that it receives Right, so the callback function is defined as sub underscore CB and it is defined for the, the cl client device. Right, so the client device will connect to the MQTT server by this uh, code function and then also a client defines to which topic it has subscribed. Right, so once these functions are defined, then the client is uh, has, has all the functions ready uh, to enable the MQTT function, MQTT protocol. And then we have uh, these printing commands where it says that it has subscribed to a certain topic and so on. So likewise, we have uh, those initialization. Then we have this part where the, uh, the ESP1 device will publish the temperature information frequently uh, within a fixed time interval to the MQTT broker. Right? So uh, it is using a certain 
uh, if command where it checks the message interval if the message interval is equal to the uh, or above the fixed time interval then the temperature details that it had collected will be published to the mqtt server right and the the time at that the time of publishing will be recorded as the last message time and the counter will be uh, incremented by one right so if there's any error in this part then uh, the function called restart and reconnect will be activated and the restart and reconnect function is there to enable the mqtt connection to be restarted and reset such that the connection is restored right so those are the functions that are allocated for the esb uh, that are uh, that should be implemented in esb1 for the esb1 to publish temperature data right so uh, it also receives notifications regarding reception of temperature data by other devices right so we will talk about the uh, esp2 uh, devices function in the next class so i hope that you receive some information during this class if you have any questions you can ask and uh, if you uh, have uh, i will also update in the whatsapp group about the updates of this class so thank you for joining today's class i will end the uh, meeting now